This is KC Sports Network, proudly presented by M Prize Bank. What's up, everybody? And welcome back to another week of Currently on No Other Pod. Uh, welcome. I'm, I'm Daniel, here with my buddy Chris. Uh, Chris, let's talk some soccer, buddy. There's no shortage of it. How's it going? It's going well, man. I, I initially thought it might be a shorter podcast, but I don't think that's going to be the case. What are you, nuts? We have like seven games to talk about. <laughs> this is true, but um, over the weekend, I got to do the uh, KCSN fundraiser, um, golf oh. fundraiser. So right. uh, I saw you and Jimmy got caught in the rain, had a little meet cute out there. <laughs> we did. I had a white polo shirt on. So, you know, oh, it was a little bit out, bro. Of, you know, we we're trying to sell raffle tickets. I didn't know if I should start dancing or something, but uh, hey, whatever sells, dude. Uh, <laughs> sex sells is what they say. You know, get the nips out, brother. Uh, well, it didn't work for me. So, you know, <laughs> it, it's OK, but it, it was fun, man. Just, you know doing stuff for charity got to meet a lot of people that we talk to all the time but never got to meet in person and cool. i don't get to see jimmy a lot in person so uh you right. know it's for the best for the best <laughs> probably but we got rained on and bonded over that so you know Bond, look at that rain bonding that's good stuff that's you guys are stuff. forever connected because of that day <laughs> that's wonderful uh did you get to play did you play any golf or just kind of stand around and be pretty i, I just stood around and to try okay. to be pretty, I did do uh, a couple putt putt attempts. Ah. Um, it made me realize I'm not a golfer. Ah, so, okay. You know, I'll just stick with soccer. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just leave it at that. Well, cool, man. Uh, dude, World Cup is uh, off and running. You know, there's been quite a few games since we last spoke. Um, Casey Currents uh, coming up on their last Challenge Cup game in this group stage. It, we're, we'll talk all about that today. So, uh, you know, but before anything happens, man, we need to talk about placing our season ticket order at the new stadium. We're in, dude. We're in like Flynn. You know, we it was tough because we had different times, right? We had different times to get mm -hmm. in and we're trying to all sit together. We're trying to coordinate that the best of our ability. And you know what? It worked perfectly. Um, it worked. Uh, got a quick bash of the process. I, we're nothing but honest on here. It just doesn't feel like this is the best way to do it. I mean, we had eight of us that wanted to do this, and they said, ah, nope, the only way to do it is to wait for the last person's selection time to do to do your selections. And I'm like, well, half of us uh, signed up for the Founders Club, which like gives you priority, priority, gold tier access to, you know, for life. You, you were in on the ground level. Founders Club, right? right? Uh, and I was like, well, that that's kind of a pretty big perk for me. Uh, you know, I don't want to wait. Uh, what was it? Five hours or four to five hours to select tickets when I could do it this morning, but it all worked out in the end. We got it all done. We're all going, but surely there's gotta be an easier way. I just thought it was kind of odd that we both, the, the minute the founders thing became available, we both signed up at, mm, that's home. not true. That's not, not true. true. Okay. You, okay. it became available on a morning one day. And I didn't know about it. Oh, I saw okay. it. You had already signed up, which, by the way, I don't know why you wouldn't have hit me up. But you, <laughs> it, it slipped your mind. You thought I was on top of it. I was not. The one so, time I thought you were on it, man. That's why I think my selection time was like an hour later than yours. Okay. Because I got in the club a little at the end of the work day. And I messaged you like a really good friend. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, hey, get in this Founders Club. And you were like, already did. And I'm like, well, thanks for the heads up. But uh <laughs> It all worked out in the end. Friendship is fun. Uh, I'll take the heat for that. You know, it worked out. Like you said, everything worked out perfectly. So, yeah, man, absolutely. Uh, but we're in season ticket renewals. I uh, hope a lot of you will join us there. I'm sure it's going to be madness. Uh, it's just going to be a fun freaking time, man, especially with that area. They're expanding. Uh, you know, I saw some some mock ups of like uh, uh, so soccer fields they're expanding into. Right. Uh, youth youth soccer facilities and stuff like that so it's gonna be a whole thing pretty excited about it i love the investment i love the yeah. investment so uh i think jumping right in there was there was a challenge cup game last week i guess that we played in that i guess we have to talk about um that i guess almost put me to sleep bro i'm sorry i love this sport but very seldom do i pick up my phone because i'm bored 
I picked up my phone, man, and I was scrolling and I was like, ah, what am I doing? I don't do this. It's just a, that thing that clicks on your head. If you're not engaged or entertained with something on the television, you're going to pick up your phone. And I, 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 I'm very sad that that happened. Uh, I find it hard to believe that Michelle Cooper would have actually absolutely added a spark in this lineup, but she was out due to yellow card suspension. But that's where I stand. That's my overarching theme here. Michelle <laughs> Cooper would have added some electricity in this game. You know, the the fundraiser that I just previously referenced, that happened. I got out during the first half as it was playing. So by the time I got home, of course, I was following along. I had it on. Uh, I had the radio on my phone, by the way. Oh so like, God. I got to listen to it. Um, so when I got home, I got to watch the whole second half. Right. Hold on. The organization that you do a podcast for about soccer couldn't let you out a little early to go watch that soccer that you do a podcast about for their organization. This is true. But you know, look at this, this KCSN right here, blast them, blast them. No, it, it, <laughs> it was fine. You know, there's a lot of things that kind of threw the timing in, in for a loop. Um, I was initially supposed to leave prior. It rained, which kind of delayed a little bit of, of things. And then true story, uh, <laughs> Jimmy and I, got kind of stranded at our golf hole. So we were uh, hole, this hole is 11. getting more romantic by the day. <laughs> so, you know, uh, hole 11, we were watching to see if they got a hole in two. And if they did, they want to trip the Pebble Beach. We were there to verify to see if anybody actually hit a hole in two and try to sell some some raffle tickets for the, for the foundation. Nobody actually got a hole in two. But... Um, you know, as everything was wrapping up, we were just kind of waiting for the last people to come through our, our hole. And then, uh, you know, we reached out and said, hey, uh, I think everybody's done. We need to ride back because it was a distance. Sure. So we uh, as they're coordinating our, our ride back, Jordan, our previous producer, um, he came by and he was collecting a lot of the signs um, for the foundation that were on, on the other holes. And he picked us up. And as we were, we went along with him to get the signs, his golf cart died. <laughs> <laughs> so we literally had to be picked up by somebody else. So that kind of delayed things. Um, it, it was fun. It was a fun, it was a fun situation. What but, the uh, hell, man? You, you, enjoy, you guys talk about me? You guys talk about me and stuff? Uh, not, not really too much. Just talk about the current and, and sporting and some other stuff. Well, Jimmy had to send me selfies saying, look at us having a good time without you. You know, I was like these pricks. <laughs> but, you know, I got to catch the first half on replay after. So I did watch it. But you're kind of right, because, you know, today preparing for this podcast, I was like trying to remember back. And it was, it's kind of a blank memory. There wasn't much that was memorable throughout the whole match. Right. Like it just yeah. kind of felt like it something happened. Um, you know, I got a few spots that, that obviously stick out to me, but it just kind of, it felt like a very non-memorable, forgettable game. Dude, we also lost the possession battle, which is never good. You never want to lose that. Uh, XG was, it was almost even not, you know, 1.35 to 0.84, you know, a little bit of sway there. We had 1.35, but, uh, I, I thought, Okay. Let's see how hat trick Hammy responds. She's excited. She, she, by the way, side note, just made July best 11. Uh, hat trick Hammy naturally made team of the week. Um, and I'm thinking, how's she going to respond? This is great, dude. She's going to be fiery. She's going to be out there wanting to add more goals, contribute. And uh, then I'm seeing, okay, who are the people that had an impact in her goals last week? Because it's not just the scorer who gets it done. It's the lead up, right? Right. Jenna Weinbrenner had a few few moments. Uh, 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 Cooper. Michelle Cooper had a few moments. And I see no Cooper. And I see Weinbrenner on the bench. And I'm like, oh, shit. Like, we, are in, we have no interest in replicating what we did pr last week. Like, that just seems weird to me. Um, some of our subs are weird. I don't know what uh, <clears throat> Carolyn Huebloom is, is doing sometimes with... Uh, with the subs she makes, but it is what it is, man. I, I, you know, Labonta was back. So that was cool. She got a good half in her. That was nice. Um, 
but then takes her out for Rylan Childers, who doesn't play a whole lot. Um, I'm just shocked. I the, the this game, dude, this game was a win. This game was three points towards this challenge cup. Not to mention Louisville loses. Louisville lost to Houston, right? So now we're thinking, dude, missed opportunity. Now it's almost a must win this weekend when Louisville comes to town, which by the way, if you've been following, we don't beat Louisville. It's not, it's not going to happen. So, you know, what do you do with this game? Just, just throw it away. Dude, you're, you're taking, I don't know. You're taking out someone like Mimi Larson, an attacker to throw in someone like Addison Merrick, a defender. How's that make sense? Make it make sense when you need a goal. I I can't. To me, this was a game for the taking, right? This was a game that we're playing Chicago, hasn't drawn a game in the Challenge Cup. They're 0 for 4, right? Lost all of them. Um, you know, their national team keeper is gone. Like, I felt like this game was about as close to a shoe-in win as we could have gotten. I should never, ever think that, right? No. I should never assume anything anymore. But I felt this was such a missed opportunity, such a missed opportunity. Had we won, we would have essentially locked up our, our playoff spot. It would have made it very difficult, you know, for anybody to come in and take that because we have such a, we have what, a, a seven goal difference right now, plus seven. So like it would have, it would have locked it up for us. And the fact that, you know, it just, it, was, it felt like a lackluster performance and, you know, a playoff spot was on the line essentially. Yeah. That, and it felt like as the game got in the last 15 minutes, we parked the bus to get a road point. Mm-hmm. That bothers me against such a bad team. You take off, you know, uh, Larson for, for Merrick, uh, you know, Weinbrenner on for Loetta, which kind of makes sense because she's working back. Um, and Weinbrenner's, you know, played fairly well recently. You know, Mace on for, for CC Kaiser in the 64th. So we got to see Mace come back. Man, it just felt like a big missed opportunity. No matter how, no matter how you want to cut it, we we should have gotten three points. And the fact that we had a miss or a miss PK, right? Low had a PK opportunity, handball, and she struck it really hard, but not really outside the frame of the keeper. You know, I was surprised she took that. I'm like, okay, I get it. She probably stepped up and was like, boom, I have seniority. I'm the one who does this. But it's like, you've been out for a bit. Like, but then I'm like, okay, who else takes it? That it made sense. She has to take it. Yeah. I don't know, man. It was just, oh, since that happened, the game was electric for 20 minutes, then the missed penalty, and then dead. That missed penalty just took wind out of everything. Yeah. Absolutely. And you, you mentioned the expected goal is 1.35. If you remove the PK, it's 0.5. Of course. So, so if you, you know, that should have been three points, but our offense without that PK opportunity, you know, it was pretty dismal. And it felt like we just missed some of the creativity, especially when you pull low out. She offers a lot. You pull her out at half. You bring in, in, in Ryland Childers. I like Ryland. You know, she went to KU. I got to watch her play a lot in college. Um, I'm always going to support her. But it just kind of felt like that might not have been the best option. Um, it, especially in such right. a such a crucial game. So I think that as a fan, that's probably pretty frustrating. And the fact, the fact that French made a phenomenal kick save, it was a bit of a one-on-one and I can't remember who the attacker was for Chicago, took a shot and then her kick save essentially saved us a point. They almost yeah. stole the game, you know, very late. So it, and I love the fact that, you know, when we put these podcasts together, we have notes that we talk about. We often you know, you don't look at them at times and prior to like, you know, talking about a particular conversation and, and the fact that you notice the same things I did, the fact that we really missed Michelle Cooper and the fact that our offense was just, you know, kind of dismal for most of the game means we're all seeing the exact same thing. Michelle it's kind Cooper, of funny. Yeah. Michelle oh. Cooper adds so much that, you know, we could have really used her. I like to, uh, I do. I like to play a little game with myself. I like to, uh, you know, talk about kind of what I want to talk about. Yeah. And then I end up scrolling down to see if it's on your bingo card here. And I'm like, (laughs) oh, shit. I hit like 90% of it. You know, it's like, 
we're seeing, you know, we're on the same page here. And I bet everyone listening here is also on that same page, man. But you have now set yourself up. It's not a must win at home this weekend. You could draw and essentially maybe get in. You know, your destiny's not in your hands if you draw. Right. Because there are other, other teams that could pass you and get into these semifinals. But if you win, you win the group. You you get in the semifinals by winning your group. There, it's up to you. Winning your in, baby. I, I don't know if we would host a game, but that'd be nice. That would be awfully nice to to host a um host a, a, a challenge cup game. It would be uh very doubtful to host. Okay. Um, because I mean you're thinking, you know, North Carolina courage is probably gonna have more points than us. Uh, OL Rain will probably have more points than us as well. Um, and that's, we probably go to one of those places because okay. OL Rain has locked up their group. Done deal. They've won. They're going through. Um, it's still a little wishy washy over in the East because Gotham and Orlando still have to play a makeup game. Um, they still have a game in hand here. So Gotham could potentially take it or North Carolina could take it. It'll be interesting. So I've looked, I've looked at a lot of the variables in, in this uh, Challenge Cup stages here, or the groups. Essentially, Gotham has, what, a goal difference of one. We have a goal difference of seven. If Gotham loses to North Carolina this weekend, then it would take a six-goal effort against Orlando to to beat us, even if we lose, by the way, I'm sorry, even if we lose. True. So, so if we lose, it's not the worst thing in the world. Cause you kind of want to assume Gotham's going to lose to North Carolina. You, it just, they're good. I, I hope so. So that to me, that's going to be the outside of our game. That's going to be the, the main game we're yeah. looking at. There you but, go. Root. That's what you want to do. Root for North Carolina this weekend. Yep. And, and hopefully we get it done at home and we don't need that to be a, a, a factor. Well, we control our we control our own destiny. So that's there you at go. At the end of the day, it's up to us. It's in your hands. It's in our hands. Um, hey, quick break, and then we'll come back and uh, talk a little more about it. See you in a minute. Thanks for listening to KC Sports Network. Make sure you download our new app. Find it on the App Store or Google Play. Just search KC Sports Network. Entertain, educate, inform. KC Sports Network. And this is the, hey, look, a little milk break, a little milk break there. Uh, this is the part in the show where I tell Chris what movie I saw, and I <laughs> I kind of rib on a little bit. Saw Barbie last night, all right? Oh, okay. Oh, have you heard anything about this movie? Uh, I don't know if anyone's talked about it or marketed it in any way, shape, or form. It's just some little movie. I think it just snuck across uh, the screens. Uh, good movie, right? Good movie, as you knew it would be. But I don't know why there are people taking time out of their day and think that their Twitter and Facebook followers need to know that they thought that movie was good. That's all some people are saying. Barbie was good. Go see it. They're not offering any other feedback on it. Just saying it was good. It's like, no shit. I can look up a Rotten Tomato score to see that it's good. All right. So I'm now convinced that anyone who is just saying it's good is scared that people don't think they're a good feminist. So they have to put out there saying that they support this movie to let them know that they're a good feminist. You don't have to do that. You don't have to do nice things and then preach to everyone that you did something nice. You just do it, you know? So let me, did you wear pink? No, I don't wear pink. I don't oh, have okay. pink. I have one pink thing and it's a polo. And I'm like, that's borderline getting dressed up for me. I'm not throwing on, <laughs> not throwing on a polo to go to the movies. All right. It's freaking 95 degrees out. But no, I just... I should get a pink tank top, though. I should get a pink tank top. A Bret Hart pink tank top, Oof. something like that. that. That would be pretty cool. There it is. Get I those shades, it. too. I dig it. <laughs> uh, oh, where were we, dude? Salmon tank. Not Nick. I, I like salmon as a good color, brother. But I'm thinking hot freaking pink. Like, salmon is, is one thing. You know, a guy at work wears a salmon polo, and I won't, I wear the full pink. I'm like, come on, buddy. You got to be a little better. <laughs> You're going to go go all the way, right? Got to go all the way. What are you? We're not eating salmon. <laughs> uh, dude, you have to miss the game this weekend. You'll be missed. Uh, sad deal. But, you know, we've been pretty good in this competition at home. Most teams are better at home. But here we are, you know, Louisville. 
again. You feel like we're going to break through at some point against Louisville, right? You think it. Like I'm, I want to. How many times have we played them so far? Three. 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 We lost lost all three times? Lost all three. Um, Fourth time's a charm. And, and racing outscored us seven to three this year, by the way, uh, for all three of our games. So, it's you know, we really don't need to preview this team that much because no. we know them so well. We should. With we should their, know that they're going to smoke us if we're not yeah, careful. Right. With their national team players or without, they beat us with both. <laughs> True. Um, you know, it's and I was looking at the players who did really well against us in our last game. Um, Fisher did well. Howell, uh, Jalen Howell really controlled the midfield. Uh, you know, uh, Carson Pickett with her brutal crosses. She's, you know, obviously makes an impact. And then uh, Monahan, Paige Monahan. Uh, she was the one who hit that laser um, past French. So we know who we're playing. We know what we have to do. I just really hope that I really hope that we adjust our, our team tactically because we've played them three times and nothing has nothing's worked. I right. really hope that, you know, we can just have different tactics. You know, I don't know if it's going to be something formation wise or, or personnel wise, but we need something different. We can't go in there with the same strategy and expect to win. If you've been following along this year and you don't hate Louisville, I don't know what's wrong with you because losing three times to a team in a season is pretty unheard of. Like the odds there, you would at least get one. You know, you don't get swept. So please, please, please don't let four happen. You know what I mean? Because, dude, essentially, if we win or squeeze in, we could play them again in the Challenge Cup. Uh, in the semifinals or finals, you know, it's a it's a scary thing. But this, they're by far our nemesis. They've outscored us seven to three. That's they, bizarre. They've taken six regular season points away from us. Yeah, that could have put us close to the playoff line, right? Right. They have oh, revenge. Let's go. They have destroyed our chances of so many things this year that we really need to pull this one back. We really need to. We need to control the midfield, and we won't. We won't, because where's DiBernardo? Where's Gatra now? Everyone's getting concussed, bro. This sucks. They controlled the midfield against us the last two games. Like, we couldn't do much. Jalen Howell, I believe a second-year player, has dominated and controlled the midfield. We have been able to do very little. And until we do that, until we take back the midfield – it's going to be tough, man. It's going to be really tough. Another thing is they've destroyed us on counters. Like they've countered, you know, us exceptionally well. It's just, we know what we need to do. We just got to win. I don't know how we do it. That's a tough task. We've been unsuccessful, but we can't do the same thing and expect a different result. The way to do it is earn a PK somewhere. That, <laughs> that has been almost a flawless situation oh. when winning tough games. Winning games maybe we shouldn't win. Uh, I'm just, I, I hate this, man. I, I get so nervous, and I, it's a stupid sport that gets me nervous. <laughs> Why do I let it affect my emotions? Uh, and I'm just, I'm tired of concussions. Can we talk about it for a minute? Is D. Bernardo off the injury list yet? No, and he, he oh. control. Now, I will say we haven't had an update that usually comes out today or tomorrow. On okay. Wednesday when we when we record, so I don't know what we're looking at right now, but we could really use Di Bernardo. I don't want to rush her. We've talked about that, um, or Gatra, but we could really use them. You partner them up with Low coming back. You know, I'm really in interested to see how that that turns out. I know, I know. I'm. Huh. I don't know, man. They just, they, they've been a, a thorn in our side. Um, we'll have to see what happens. But did you, did you, did you talk about this? Uh, I, I do want to point something out real quick. Last week, you guys. No, no, no. It was not a, an editing error. Although it did, <laughs> it did sound like this. It could have been an editing error. And we should have just played it off and, and, and you know, blamed, blamed the editors. But Chris was like talking and saying some things uh, about Haley Mace, I think. And I, I must have been reading because I wasn't listening to this full talk. And I said verbatim what he said right after him. And this 
this motherfucker, he's so nice. He's so nice. He didn't say a damn word. And so where I, I said, Chris, you got to call me on this, please. <laughs> Not only will it be hilarious, but it lets me know I need to be a better listener. <laughs> terrible my wife texts me at work that day and i was like you have got to be kidding me so. <laughs> you were just so confident in what you're saying man you're so just happy and confident i didn't want to ruin that man i just 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 keep it rolling baby just keep it rolling i'm not gonna stop you okay well this next time call me out because okay. that's just it's it's bad and it's embarrassing on my part but i must have been thinking about what i was going to say next instead of listening to you and that as a guy who's an improv that's a bad thing to do <laughs> you know, that's a classic sign of ADHD, by the way. So it is, yeah. A little bit of that. Is, yeah. A little bit of that, a little bit of tism. A little tism <laughs> in there. Uh but before we, we go on too far too far. To do those stats. Uh, we're getting ready to. We're gonna yeah. hop right on them. So I had a couple of minutes and I uh want to see if there's any fun uh challenge cup stats. Mm -hmm. Um and I did see that Hamilton and Dabinia are both tied for the most goals at the moment at three which is kind of insane considering Dabinia's been at the World Cup and Hamilton got them all in one game, in one game <laughs> which is, is pretty wild. Yeah. Um, to be fair, there are a lot of people tied at three. So, but hey, both of them are up there, right? And mm -hmm. Dabinia has the highest um, goals per 90 at 1.62. So the fact that she, you know, is gone for a couple of the games is pretty impressive, right? Yeah. And then this would have shocked me at the beginning of the year. Um, but Jenna Weinbrenner is tied for the most assists at two. So, and she got them all in one game. She got them all in one game. And, and one of them was questionable with the, the Cooper cross, <laughs> Cooper cross, but, the Cooper cross. But uh, hey, you know, she deserves some credit. Absolutely. And you got uh, Mesa's tied for most goal creating actions per 90, huh? Yep. At 1.67. Well, that's cool. I mean, so, hopefully they can expand stuff. upon that this weekend. Um, see what happens. So, uh, you know, we have we we after this game this weekend is uh, our next game is a regular season game, August eighteenth. So, got some time off. Heal, heal, heal from injuries. Uh, uh, rest the legs. You know, get ready to jump back in it because uh, you're gonna have your 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 World Cup stars back, and uh, you know, ready to go. So. Some of them. Well, some of them. Some and we'll get into that here in a minute. Yes, we will. But uh, uh, that's a 13-day break. One small injury update. Claire Lavage is off the season-ending injury list. We have no update uh, uh, on other players either, but that, that's what we got. So It's a good sign, though. Good see, right? Yeah. Good sign. Maybe we see her before the end of the season, uh, maybe a late August or September or something. Who knows? Yeah, hopefully. Yeah. And with uh, Hannah Gloss, I'd like to see her play as well. Yep. For sure. She, uh, she's off the season ending injury list as well. So love it. So. Love it. Well, we know uh, challenge cup is the biggest thing ever right now, but when we come back, we're going to talk about this small little thing called the world cup. Stay tuned. Thanks for listening to KC sports network. Make sure you download our new app, find it on the app store or Google play. Just search KC sports network. Entertain, educate, inform. KC Sports Network. Listen, don't 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 hype up a movie before I go see it, buddy. Like people hype it, and then I go in with these expectations, and I just get slapped in the face with a ton of feminism. <laughs> not a bad thing, by the way. I'm not being like, oh, men are under attack, but I am like, holy shit, this was some heavy-handed feminism on a platter. You know what I mean? <laughs> I, I, I'm excited I was... to hear what you say. You know, I mean, I'm excited to hear you. I, I was debating whether or not to go see it, and I'm I'm all for it, by the way. I just yeah, I don't go see that many movies anymore. And I'm like, mm -hmm. if I go and see one, I'm a history nerd. I love history, so Oppenheimer is clearly down my alley. I'm really yeah. excited to go see that. Um, but I'll probably wait to see Barbie when it comes out on HBO Max. It will probably go to Max, absolutely. Uh uh Oppenheimer will that's a I I'd watch Oppenheimer again. I'm not itching to watch Barbie again. It had some good laughs. I, I you know, I was giggling a little bit, but uh, it was like, have a big heaping pile of feminism, please. Like, it, and it's like it was it was more like spelled out for you, like you were an idiot. Like if you're like you're not doing these things that you should be doing. Luckily, I would assume most of us are already aware of these things, right? So, 
do you think it was overrated not in terms of the movie but just in terms of the hype like it, it was obviously incredibly hyped up the mar- marketing was insane do you think it was the movie was overhyped did it live up to your expectations with all the additional pressure and marketing no because i let everyone influence me i let the expectations get to me and so no it was underwhelming in that sense i was like damn i wish i wouldn't have seen anything so i could have just made my own freaking you know uh conclusions myself your mind was pre-blown yeah that's how it goes so whatever hey it's fine we're going in right now to a little world cup talk do you like my jersey i love it man i need to get one they're beautiful. I need they, to... If it's nice, got the guns are out, of course. Uh, another reason to watch our YouTube. <laughs> see these stripes? See these stripes? That see these cool. stripes? See those? Yeah. Do you know I had that? I do. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. You, I forgot. You do. You I... study my body. Uh, I will. <laughs> you sent me pictures when you got it, too. So oh, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> One of the coolest things about the, these paint splatter jerseys, they are individual. No two jerseys are the same. This splatter is unique man and i just think that's the coolest thing in the world well now you've now you've kind of confused me because i want to i want a jersey with a lot of splatter i don't want a jersey with a little bit like if i get mostly white and a couple bits of splatter i'm gonna be upset i want i want the full splatter but that you'll get you'll get splatter it just will be different splatter than mine like how much i mean we could you want to go we could compare splatter (laughs) <laughs> I mean, the white to splatter ratio, I want to know what yours is and what everybody, is it the same? Is it mm-hmm. the same amount of blue splatter per jersey? I don't now know. We're just talking math. This is crazy. I, you could add more <laughs> splatter and just ruin the jersey. <laughs> I'm a numbers guy, economics and finance. I, w- I want to know the splatter to, to white it, ratio. It is a little fucked because I'll be like, I'll be like, damn. Did an ink pen explode? Like for a minute, I'll look down and think like, you know, like if you had a pen in your pocket or something and it just leaked ink in your pocket. <laughs> I'm afraid if I get it, I'm going to have a bunch of white and just a little bit of splatter. And I'm, then I'm going to have to go splatter myself. I'm going to have to go is, splatter myself. That is the most asinine thing I've ever heard. <laughs> splatter myself. That's gross. Uh, bro. It's not how I meant it, but you know. I know, but I'm losing it now. <laughs> You're, the back jerseys are very similar but we will have back. some will be very individualized you I know like it. it's individualized splatter uh u.s women dare i say are a little bit nerve-wracking uh they're in trouble you know if, if it's not alex morgan missing a penalty kick it's not being able to score a goal against uh uh who do we play portugal uh and then now god it's been so long who we play last wednesday uh, Netherlands? Netherlands, yeah, which would be a hard game. We knew Netherlands are going to be hard. They're top ten. Rankings don't mean a whole hell of a lot in this tourney because everyone's good quality. Everyone's there to win. Um, but Netherlands, they're tough, man. Always, always a good team. They're so fun to watch. They remind me a little bit like the the men's Netherlands team when they have like Van Persie and 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 Wesley Schneider. Just mm. defensively okay, but offensively just so much fun to watch they just put up i think six on on vietnam in their last game poor vietnam by the way i mean they just got absolutely destroyed right man it's cut where do you start it's kind of like where do you start when you talk about this team they're clearly you know i want to back up quickly let's talk about the expectations because that's i think where we need to start this team women's soccer in the world have come so far since the last you know two world cups you know what rising tide lifts all boats or whatever that phrase is i feel like the rest of the world in terms of women's soccer has become greatly better and that gap just naturally closed i don't think we're going to see a team dominate like uh like we did you know in the last two or three world cups it's a little bit like uh the dream team for men's basketball you have the Jordans and you have the ewings and all and all those guys and then now, you know, you have the, the Luka Doncic and, and the Guyanis from, from Greece. So the world has caught up to us. So when we compare, I don't think it's fair to compare this team with the previous because of the no. context and the expectations. No one's doing that. But but still the rankings, like we're number one right. in the world. So you had to prove that leading up to this World Cup. And it's, you know, it's off of who are you beating? How much are you beating them by? Um 
So it was a justified one ranking. This team's not playing like a number one. Um, now, I really thought a draw against uh, Netherlands was good. I was like, you know, that's that's as good as you can get against a good Netherlands team. You got to be happy that you escaped because moment of the night was watching Lindsay Horan try to beat the shit out of her teammate from uh, from Lyon. Lyon? Is that where they're from? Leon. Leon. OK. And uh, what a white man. Lyon. <laughs> <laughs> How do you spell and, that? Uh, and how do you spell that? Yeah. Just rawr. Fucking, they were fighting, dude, like pushing. And that, that woman was a pest all night. Like she was just a little bug, right? And you wanted someone to just clock her, just take her out. Well, Lindsay Horan said, nah, nah. Let me just go head this ball into the goal with reckless abandon and put my stamp on this game. Keep pushing me all you want with that extracurricular bullshit, trying to get physical <laughs> with me. I'm just going to go score goals. That, that was player awesome. was a pest. And like, if they're on my team, I love them. If they're on the other team, I hate them. And that's kind yep. of what she was. But the fact that she leveled Haran, that should have been a yellow, by the way. Yeah. Should have Because she yellow. didn't play the ball at all. Not at you all. Not even looking at the ball. And it's like, you've got to be kidding me. Why aren't you making these calls? Some of these refs are scared to make these calls. I think they don't want to influence such a big game. So they let a lot of bullshit go. They don't give cards when you really should. I hate that, dude. I hate that, like, playoff sports. Take the Chiefs, for instance. What was that? That The Super Bowl against the Eagles. They're like, well, yeah, that was offensive pass interference, but you don't call that in a game like this. What? You have to call it in any game. So I'm just kind of like that with the World Cup, too. Why aren't they calling this stuff? I, I agree, but nothing made me more happy as a human being than seeing a living raging pissed off Lindsay Horan just run up and absolutely crush that ball I have never seen such a you know you got fucked up and they just you know were so pissed off in a soccer game like that and just made up for it immediately it was I, bro I that I'm a fan of Horan but that just put it sure. on another level put it right on another before level. the goal I, dude, I'm so heated. I, I got Sky and Christian over. We're yelling at the television. And I go, uh, I go, man, how cool would it be if Haran just goes beast mode and scores right here? Oh, my God. <laughs> we all lost our shit, dude. My dogs were pissed off. It was a whole thing with how loud we got. Um, but all in all, it's still a draw. And now you're, you're, your fate's in your hands. We didn't celebrate the draw. They didn't celebrate at all because they knew there was still work to be done. So tell me why they celebrated a nil-nil draw against Portugal. Because they're advancing? Because they got through? Like, that's the minimum? That's what they need to do? Yeah. You know, there's been a lot of criticisms about their, their celebrating. Um, most notably, like, uh, Carly Lloyd, you know? Um, she, she bashed them for celebrating. <sighs> do we like I, Carly Lloyd? I'm, I'm not really sure. You know... I appreciate everything she's done. I don't agree with some of the her 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 opinions at times. She's that player who's kind of like, you know, our generation was better. This younger generation doesn't get it. They don't have the same mentality. That's kind of how I feel like she approaches things. Old old woman yells at cloud. Well, because yeah, <laughs> when when she left, she's like, I could feel a shift in in the culture on the team. And you know, when she left to the incoming team and and those players. So it's a little bit of that, like, old person, you know, just being grumpy. Um, but I don't know. I I mean, part of me wants to be like, why are you celebrating? You're at, you're the number one team in the world. We're better than this. But part of me is kind of like, you know, go for it a little bit. I'll tell you what, though. Celebrating, celebrating with the fans, I do love that, though, because these fans sure. went halfway across the world Spent their to money. come and see you. Spent their money, yeah. time, everything probably quit jobs, took time off of jobs, whatever have it, like they did it to come and watch you play. So the fact that they celebrated with them, I absolutely love it. Trinity Rodman stayed and took pictures with every everybody who stayed, all the fans who stayed um, and signed autographs for all of them. Cool. So like, how cool is that? That just made me show that she really understands that this is bigger than the result. This is just making th th those people, those kids are going to remember that moment forever. Right. Sure. So, I, I do now, love that. I there there's a little bit of Carly Lloyd's comments. I do agree with 
But then there's some where I'm like, okay, now here's the deal. There's that term, act like you've been here before. Well, they are. Because have you seen their pregame, like, dress and clothes that they're wearing? Like, just swagging out, dude. Just looking, like, baller. And it's like, okay, they're acting like they've been there before. They are the number one team in the world, and they got that confidence, that swagadelic confidence. Uh, But then secondly, it's like, dude... I don't know how much celebrating I would have done after that Portugal game. I think I would have collapsed on the ground and breathed a sigh of relief that Alyssa Nair's left-handed post saved the day in that last few minutes. Um, By the way, what an early game this was. I came from the sporting game, set my alarm for 2 a.m. We woke up at 2. I never turned on the TV. We were both up, and it's like, all right, let's watch the game. And two seconds later... We were just <laughs> asleep and I woke up at like three forty, and I was like, Oh fuck. I bet we're up by two goals. And I turn it on. It's like 20 minutes left and it's nil nil. And I'm like, Holy shit. So I watched the rest of it and then, you know, got back to bed. But uh, this is not how they wanted it to go because if they were to win, they get the next two games are very favorable times for viewers. It would have been like an 8 o'clock game one night, and if they got through that, it'd be like a 9 o'clock game the next time. P.M. Great, like, primetime-ish games. Now, they're screwed. They have a 4 a.m. game. I think if they win, they play at like 3 a.m. So they boned us. They absolutely boned us. I wonder what the viewership count, uh, the difference would have been had they had a a primetime game versus a 4, 5 a.m. game, right? Yeah, like that, that's a lot of money. That's a lot of advertisement revenue. Um, it is. Luckily, dude, 4 a.m. is better than 2 a.m. OK, yes, you can get a nap in Saturday. We can make it work Sunday morning, 4 a.m. You know, it will be watched. Uh, and I hope so, because it's it's do or die against a little team that's also kind of good. Ranked third in the world, Sweden. Holy shit. I highly expect us to get bounced. Because there are a lot of questions about coaching too, man. And the rumors are circulating that once Flotco gets fired Sunday afternoon, he will be the new Casey current head coach. Thoughts? Not surprised. I would not be surprised. We spoke on this. Yeah. You know, I, I don't have much of an analysis on that. Like my thoughts of Vlatko have been exceptionally high um, until recently. And I'm not, I'm not he doesn't sub. He's not subbing nothing. He He's not rotating. Sub we just have such a talented team and it doesn't feel like they're playing to their, their strengths. You know, you have Julie Ertz playing as a center back who the main reason she was one of the best D mids for the U S the last, you know, 10 years. Right. The main reason she's on the team is because she played such a valuable position and Andy Sullivan, you know, was just not, you know, cutting it to the U S standards. So she made the team as a D mid and now she's a center back. We have Alana yeah. Cook on the team who could play center back. I understand you don't want to mess with the center back chemistry, right? That you don't want to mess with Try just late to. in the game. But there's just so many things like the sub of, uh, sorry, I'm trying not to go on a ramble here, but the sub of ramble. Uh, uh, Rapino for uh, Sophia Smith. What was, what is she's that? the best attacker on our team? Which isn't playing like that. Why isn't she playing like the best attacker on the team? You have one good game and then you disappear for two games. I really like I was looking at some technical breakdown of of this last game, man. And it looked like she did not have much support. This midfield have not supported a a quality attack. Alex Morgan, you know, I grew up being a big Alex Morgan fan. I don't missing PKs, missing PKs. You know, it just kind of felt like she was that one player we needed a spark from. And it felt like the attack would die with her. So, you know, we're just not playing to our ability. I don't know, Alex Morgan is not the player she used to be. Um, no, everyone gets older. Everyone yeah. loses a step, whether it's a little bit of speed or what have you. Uh, it's just the players now need to come together yes. and say, hey, a lot of people are bashing us. A lot of people are bashing our coach. Let's go fucking win. Let's go out there, hit them hard, hit them early, hit them often, and win this game. Yeah. I don't want to be, I don't want to be in some deadlock. Nil nil draw in the 80th minute with Sweden. I don't want it. That sounds terrifying. Jesus. But you know what did shock me in this World Cup? Two teams being eliminated, I didn't think was going to happen. 
Canada, Canada. who won the Olympics, yeah. gold medalists in the Olympics, eliminated. Brazil, which obviously we have a couple, uh, we have vested interest in that. Um, Brazil my was best, eliminated. My vested interest is, uh, hey, Dabinia, come on back and uh, play in this challenge game with us. Bring, <laughs> bring your buddy Lauren. Uh, well, <laughs> let's have a good time, you know? Obviously, I think that's never going to happen on on a few days rest and travel and all that. But how cool would that be? Dabinia shows up and she's on the bench or something. All of a sudden, you see her in the starting starting 11. There's no possible way. It's not going to happen, but I would lose my shit. A guy can dream, you know? A guy can dream. I mean, because you know she'd love to get out there and wash this taste out of her mouth. You're like, okay, if I can't help Brazil move on, I'm going to help Kansas City move on. You know, and I, I would think that, uh, you know, and Lauren didn't even play she this morning, play right? Last game. So, but Dabinia did. Uh, I didn't know what was happening. I had the game on mute, the Brazil game, uh, as I was uh, working out. And so it ended, and I didn't know that Brazil was eliminated if they lost. And so when they're all collapsed on the field, I'm like, so something bad just happened, huh? <laughs> <laughs> bad deal, man. Real sad for her. That's a... Uh, that hits that that hurts. Well, that and like, you know, Marta, her last game oh, yeah. in the World Cup, her lat didn't even make the 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 round of sixteen in her legendary career. So that that hurts too. Um, this is the first time they have not scored a goal in a group stage game. Brazil. They actually since ninety one. Since ninety one, they scored one. Right, they got one against France. Are you talking about no, Marta? I'm talking about. No, sorry. This Brazil. This was a draw today, right? Against Jamaica, Brazil and Jamaica. Yeah, and they played the game prior. They lost to France two to one, and Dabinia had that goal. I'm saying that this is the first time Brazil has failed to score in a group stage game since 1991. Oh, sorry. Yes, I'm with you. So they, you know, they always score a goal in group stage games for the last 32 years. That's wild. Pretty wild stat. That's crazy. Yeah. Uh, Denmark beat Haiti to move on. So uh, uh, our, our buddy Balasager and uh, uh, what's her first name? Balasager? Stein? Steen? Although, Stina. 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 She, so, uh, I, sorry, go on. I, I was told uh, the pronunciation of her last name is different. Um, okay. I'm going to try and uh, pronounce this. Uh, a good buddy of mine told me what it should be. And I will work to, to get that up here. Um, okay. Da-da-da. What do you, he like? He texts you or something? Yeah, it's a uh, ball e sayer. Um, it's a soft G. It's a ball sayer. Okay, I ball want to actually what Casey Current put on their phonetic spelling was uh, ball So oh, there's well, that. There you go. We're all wrong. Stina ball Peterson, Peterson. So, but Balasagar, Balasagar. Say it a million times in your head, Balasagar, <laughs> Balasagar. E- easy enough. But dude, uh, she's moving on, so that's cool. No, no early departure. Uh, you know, I, I'm a little selfish. I'm like, nah, let's get you back to Kansas City, get you integrated into this team. You know, let's gear up to make a run for the playoffs here. Yeah, I'm. I'm excited to have those those two center backs. I mean, it's. I just can't contain my excitement having two national team center backs on our team, making a run in the Challenge Cup, making a last standing ditch run for the regular season. Leave it all out there, man. Just put it all out there. Let the chips fall where they may. We absolutely need them. Yeah. I just it's silver well lining. Silver lining that that Brazil loss is that we we uh, get our players back. Yeah. Uh, Bala Sager plays Monday against hosts Australia, 5.30 in the morning. Uh, Australia looking pretty good, man. I think they'll be happy to get Sam Kerr back. Um, pretty wild that she's had to sit so many games here. So Yeah. Uh, and then U.S. play at 4 a.m. Sunday against Sweden. So fingers crossed. We'll see what happens, everyone. Any uh, what else? You, anything else you want to add? Um, let me check and see if anything happened while we were chatting yeah nothing i've nothing i've seen nothing i've seen um i don't know this u.s game is going to be rough this louisville current game is going to be rough um 
I mean, we could have a very, very happy weekend, or we could all just be really bummed and impressed. We'll see. Hey, big, big weekend, really. Uh, if you're a fan of Kansas City soccer, man, yeah. and you got sporting on Friday, Casey Current Saturday night, USA Sunday morning, Denmark Monday morning. Um, it's four four quality days of soccer, man. It's all it's all knockout soccer, all of it. Every one of those four games I mentioned is kind of knockout soccer. Your, your uh, challenge heart. cup excluded, like you don't know, right? Right. right. I mean, our our heart is going to be destroyed after this weekend, right? Our heart, in some way, in it's, some there's way. no way it plays out four out of four good results. There's no way that won't happen but, unless uh, you're Louisville. Because they will beat us for the fourth time. Let's just throw that out there. <laughs> Son oh, of a gun. I don't know. I'm excited, though, man. It's a, yeah, man. a big four days of soccer. Big four, big four. Well, cool. I'll wrap it up then. Um, you're going to go order your jersey. Get on that. It. I'm going to order it. Make sure I get my, plenty of splatter. I'm going to request got, extra splatter. I got myself an XL because they, you know, Nike likes to, likes to hug you a little bit. You know, they like to <laughs> run small, so... Anyways, folks, hey, thanks for thanks for tuning in this busy week. This has been uh, a lot of fun, and uh, look forward to hopefully talking about more victories than non next week and see what happens, man. So if you guys need to, uh, if you want to, you should leave us five-star rating and review, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you listen to us. Um, follow us on Twitter, at Dan Kuzer, at Chris Wright 21 at No Other Pod. Kansas City Sports Network. Uh, we're on YouTube. Go subscribe. People people commenting over there all the time, dude. I, I don't use it enough. I need to go pay attention to what people are saying. So it's, it's, fucking, it's fucking rude that uh, I'm not. it's nice. Hopefully it's nice. Nice things. I, I hope, hope so. I'm, I'm sure I, it's I'm nice. I'm a fragile ego. I, I can't handle the heat. <laughs> Just be gentle. Oh, man. Well, we appreciate you guys uh, joining us here on this rainy 11th green, uh, two whole cha- <laughs> two stroke challenge, whatever it was. <laughs> Our golf cart did not break down, and we will see you guys next Wednesday. Love you, smooches.